community of faith welcome to the podcast we are so thankful that you're joining us today i'm excited to uh be sitting here with my friend jessica what's up hey jessica Hi tell there. us what you do at community of faith um so i am on the women's team anything women's needs do what that's me um and then i'm also helping um out on our local missions yes okay perfect and my name is sheree witt and i'm the creative director here at cof and jessica and i are super excited to be meeting with the mission partner of the week during our best gift season. This is Sandy Spangler. We are so excited that you're here with us today um, as we are diving in to uh, meet with all of our mission partners for the next couple weeks to talk about what is going on in the different ministry areas that Community of Faith supports. Um, your giving has made it possible for us to um, get out across the world and make a difference in the lives of others. And so Sandy's going to share today about Karis House in Zambia. Um, but I did want to let you guys know before we get started, if you're listening online, if you go to cof.church slash best gift, you can get a digital copy of our best gift booklet for 2023. Um, and this will give you a more deep dive into all the stories of life change that have happened across the world through our best gift program. So check that out if you haven't already. And there are, I know, a couple of specific stories about Kara's house in this booklet um, that Sandy might not have time to go into today, but we want you to be able to see pictures and have a visual connection to what she's sharing today. So welcome, Sandy. Thank you. That welcome. was a mouthful, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. I okay. was like, breathe. I know, right? <laughs> I talk so much. But Sandy, I'm serious. I'm really happy to hear from you today. Um, um, because I know Karis House is a new ministry. I mean, as mm -hmm. far as it's been around for about a year. Yep. Is that right? We just had our one year anniversary. Well, congratulations. Yeah. And um, I, I know that the people listening or watching today are going to want to know, what is it? It's been around a year. How'd you get involved in it? Like, where do you live? Like, where is Sandy yeah. and family from? And how did you end up in Zimbabwe? Because if you're not... Oh, if Zambia? You're just, you mean Zambia. Zambia. I said Zimbabwe. Everyone does it. It's do a Z. Do they really? Oh, Yeah. Do you know that I was? I almost said that during the service today too. Oh, did you? Yes. yes okay. And I was like Zambia. And you know they they border each other. So. I did not know no, that. Oh yeah, they did right not know that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know that you are a native Texan, and I want you to share uh -huh. that with us. Yeah. But somehow the Lord laid on your heart to go to Zambia and to be a part of a mission there. So yeah, this just it's insane to me. It's amazing. I love how God works, and I want to hear the story. So. Tell us about your family okay. and how Kara's house got started and how yeah. you kind of got connected there. Well, I'm married to Robert. We've been married for 35 years. Uh, he was born and raised in Dallas. Okay. I was born in Dallas, raised in San Antonio area. Okay. We have uh, three children, two grandbabies. Oh, okay. And so, yeah. So, Sandy um, does we... not look like she has grandbabies. <laughs> oh, thank so you. So that's not even fair. Three <laughs> children. Three children, too. And yeah. three kids. So uh, we live here in Hockley. Okay. And um, we have one son that lives in Cyprus. Okay. And one son that lives in Brookshire. And one son that lives in Prairie View. Okay. So everybody's pretty close. So we've just kept all my hens in the hen house. Serious so, yeah. little blessing. I know. Oh, so, goodness. yeah. So um, so how, wh what is, if you guys are all from Texas, what is the connection with Zambia? Yeah, so um, I was actually working at a church in McKinney, okay. and I was in the missions office. And so I was over helping train and send missionaries and coordinating all the mission trips. And um, it was a very mission-minded church, right. very similar to COF. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> we ended up going and checking on a couple of um, missionaries in Zambia that came from our church okay, okay. and fell in love with uh, the ministry that they were working in, thought it was very unique. And so we ended up taking mission teams back. And um, so we came very close with the missionaries. Mm, okay. And then oh, one November, actually it could have, it was maybe October, Robert comes home and he says, I think, I think we're going to move to Zambia. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and I'm what like, year was this? This was in 2013, 2012. Oh, 2012. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, we're, we're moving. And, you know, I'd so always... So at this point, you've just gone on mission trips to Zambia. Yeah. And, you know... you're not... No. You're and not I'm thinking in, we're moving. Well, and I'm always like, wouldn't it be so great? Right. Like, you know... Because you then, never want to leave. You love the people. Yeah. Right. Well, and, I, you know, you want to you wanna be the missionary, sure, right? Yeah, it's sure. just like you, you have that desire sure. to serve and till your husband comes home and says hey we're selling everything and moving and then you're like wait what yes i don't know if i can so, do that i don't know yeah yeah kind of hard to go hey wait everything done gone 
I mean, I know if God calls you somewhere, like you go and you do. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, but also I've always step? said, okay, the Lord needs to call both of us. He needs to tell right. both of us. So yeah. what was your, that was already obviously on your heart though. Yeah. So when he said it, it was probably just like. It was, then yes. it was real. Yes. Because we had our, our two children at the time were in college. Right. Oh, okay. So it wasn't like they were coming with the timing us. timing was yeah. probably good. And you're like, yeah. wait, we're we're leaving. Right. You're gonna, you're selling my house. Right. Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> you're selling my car. But we didn't end up selling our house. We sold everything else. But anyways, it was a really, really, really hard time. We left. Um, five months later was quick. Wow, that is. And our rough. church really kept wrapped wrapped around us and mm-hmm. sent us. It was really hard year. We learned a lot. Um, um, we ca- we came home um, August of 2014. With a, another son who oh, was 17. So you adopted when you got there? No, we brought him home okay. to the States. Um, and that's a whole other podcast. Yeah, I was say, like, how did that happen, <laughs> and, right? And so anyway, he was, um, yeah, he was 18 when we adopted okay. him here. But yeah. he's a citizen now. That's he's got awesome. just got his passport wow. this week. I was oh, like, wow. Right. It's like... I don't know why the citizenship wasn't a big right. deal, but the, the no, passport was really big deal. Because well, now you can go somewhere. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> so that's good. So anyways. Well, that's great. So, you know, through – and this having a Zambian son and continuing to go back during all these years because right. I worked for an organization that was still involved there, I just became more and more aware of the plight of a, a woman, a female mm-hmm. in that country and, and had some relationships with some girls – we went in 2018, um, and I took a group of hand-picked women, and we went to do a retreat mm-hmm. oh. uh, with a bunch of high school girls. And uh, Carrie, the co-founder, was on that trip. And we stayed behind a couple of days. She was getting her adoption process started. And we were sitting in a Thai food restaurant in Lusaka having dinner, and we found out that one of the girls that had been on this retreat, which was just a phenomenal week, with these girls was pregnant mm-hmm. and she was going to be uh, dismissed from the program. Okay, mm-hmm. So what does dismiss mean in, that, yeah. in their culture? And <clears throat> so uh, they would say chased, they would chase them, but that just means they're not allowed to go to school. They, they left, they, they broke the rules of the ministry that they were in okay. and so, under. So becoming pregnant as a young woman is frowned upon. Oh my gosh. And it's interesting okay. because there, one to three girls, one of every three girls under 16 is pregnant. Okay. Mm. And that's the ones that are pregnant. That's not the wow. ones having abortions. Right. And they say about 40% under the age of 17. So we're talking yeah. lots, lots. lots. Right. lots. Yeah. And, and there's so, no support. So there's nothing. there was nothing in place that would help them make the decision not to abort. Right. And if they understand that education is the only way out. Right. Mm-hmm. Then they, they, they're like, I need to have an abortion. Right. right. You know? And uh, they don't under, they've never probably seen pictures of an embryo. They just are desperate. Right. Yeah. And so um, the, some of the last statistics I saw 80% of girls go to school up to what we would consider like elementary school, mm-hmm. at 30% middle school and high school. Oh, so wow. where did all these girls go? Right. Yeah. And so. Um, and you cannot even get a job working in a grocery store, bagging groceries, or in a gas station pumping gas, and they still pump your gas mm. in Zambia, without a high school diploma. Really? Wow. Oh, wow. You can't even go on to most vocational schools without your high school diploma. Okay, so that means only 30% of women are in the workforce. Oh, and that doesn't even mean they're graduating. Uh-huh. That maybe means they go to... They go. They go, yes. Uh-huh. And so... And, you know, it's a patriarchal culture, and so there's so much abuse mm-hmm. of women. You know, for a man to beat his wife is normal. Right. Even though it's against the law, you won't find police officers that will arrest anybody yeah. for that or it's anything. It's the culture. So it's right. just yeah. the culture. So anyways, so we're sitting here. We we are like, so what do we do? And we, we had relationships with some other girls who had found themselves in the same situation. And they are just literally going to move back into, they call them compounds. That would be like a slum or very rural, what you think of in Africa. Right. No running water, no electricity, little mud hut, that kind of things. Mm. 
and they're basically just going to repeat that process probably for the rest of their lives. And so it's amazing that it's so common, and yet it is one of the most shameful things Mm -hmm. a woman can have happened to her. Are they able to keep their babies? Or do they so yes, no, 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 no. That's okay. very, um, It's it, that culture, it's good and it's bad. But in that culture, they take care of one another. If, if this woman dies, I'm taking her kids. Okay. Mm-hmm. If, you know, um, they don't necessarily raise them. Mm-hmm. And they're maybe not treated the same as the other kids in the household, but they definitely take care of them. Okay, so it's a village stuff. Yes, 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 very much so. And so anyways, we were sitting in that restaurant, and I was like, no, no, this. she's getting ready to go to nursing school. No, she's bright. Mm -hmm. No, what else can we do? What can we do? How can we help, yeah. Yeah. And so anyway, once we got back to the hotel, we were talking about it, and I said, Someone needs to take these girls in and help continue their education while they are pregnant and then help them take care of the baby afterwards so they can go back to school. Because if there's really no one to take care of the baby, they They, don't get to go back to school. And so she said, well, who's doing that? And so we started investigating and literally, and there's so many ministries and NGOs in Zambia Mm because the need has always been so great there. It's getting better. But just the AIDS and the poverty, Mm -hmm. it's just caused lots of issues. There's no one helping young pregnant teens finish their education. Mm -hmm. And so... So what does it look like for all these pregnant women who end up keeping their kids? How do they support themselves and how do they get the education without y'all's help? They don't get educated. Okay. So then what happens? So they pretty much get pregnant again. Just the cycle. Oh, do they marry? Do they live with mm. their say with their family? Not and typically. They'll they'll the, the families will force the guy mm. to um, take them or support them pay somehow. damages. It's called dam they're damaged, so the men have to oh pay damages. Wow. Yeah, it's terrible. Um so, you know, I I told the story of Regina. Mm-hmm. So her father ended up in prison for killing somebody. Her mother divorced him, and so now they have nobody supporting the family. Mm -hmm. So the mother made the decision that I'm going to marry Regina off at the age of 11. Oh, my goodness. And then that way he can support the family because they just gave him a girl. Right. And so she ends up pregnant at 13. So, So really there's nothing. They just end up living in that destitute poverty. It's just a cycle. Yeah. And so... They will sell vegetables. They will do this. They will do that. Whatever they can. Just to get that little bit to scrape by. To scrape by. There's a lot of transactional sex that happens. If you'll buy me some food. Right. You know. Right. That yeah. kind of thing. So it's hard. It's yeah. really, really hard. And so Carrie was like, well, 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 let's find a place. We couldn't find anyone doing anything. And so she had come to me and said, we want to get involved in something. We, we want to support, but, but we want to be hands-on. Right. Mm-hmm. And I said, I think we just found our hands-on. And she was go. like, what? So that, that 2018 was when the idea came to okay. us. Oh. And so then it took um, a couple of years where we were like trying to find people that were doing this in Africa. And we really we found a place and... Kenya, um, but really nobody else. And so we're like, well, we don't know what we're doing, and nobody else is doing this, so who can we learn from? Right. And so then COVID hits, right? you know, oh, and so we were kind of ready to launch in 2020. Mm. And so, yeah, so 2022, I flew over in October and got the keys for our property. Wow. And I was on this property. It has... Four houses and an office structure, and I'm like there by myself. Oh my goodness. All these keys, and I'm like, well, now what? Okay, so, yeah. come on, girls. So there we Let's are. <laughs> so how, what was the process whereby you welcomed residents? Like, yeah. oh, is there a screening process, mm-hmm. or how do you – is there an overwhelming number of people who are wanting, and you only have limited beds? Oh, or yeah. Like, how well, work? when you think of 40% of mm-hmm. all girls under the age sure. of 17 – we were like, okay, so we have to figure out what's our goal. And if our goal is education, we have to bring in girls who can finish their education. Sure. 
And so that is daunting because the, the educational system in Zambia is really hard right. and not great. Mm-hmm. And so um, we decided, and this is going to sound terrible, but we decided we're going to focus on girls who have been in school and have shown that they are successful Mm -hmm. in school they need to speak some english Mm -hmm. the national language of zambia is english oh really but there's 73 different tribal languages Mm -hmm. so if you have not been educated you don't speak english right okay and so so anyways so under 16 you have to speak some english you have to have been in school or recently been in school and somewhat successful because these girls come from such trauma situations they're not going to be really successful at school Mm -hmm. i mean if you're living in a home where you're being abused Mm -hmm. or you've been given as an 11 year old to a 26 27 year old man right so yeah uh your first pregnancy Mm -hmm. and you have to be pregnant you can't have had your baby Okay. okay and so then we do an assessment we take them to the clinic and we get an actual scan Mm -hmm. of the The baby, medical help, medical help. We pay for the birth, housing, all their food, all their education, discipleship, um, enrichment. Just kind of like what I would do if I had a daughter in the same situation. And obviously, there's a faith component to it. Well, it's all about Jesus Christ, everything. And so the name Karis. Yeah, I was gonna ask where did this name from? The name Karis. so there's different very spellings of it, but it's grace in Greek. Oh, that's lovely. And uh, Zambia is a shame-based culture. Okay. And so the way they discipline, the way they talk to them in school, the way their families mm-hmm. talk to them, it's a shame. That's how they discipline. Oh. And so just putting grace in the name sure. to help them understand the grace of Christ in your life is everything. Right. And so... So uh, they get professional counseling. Mm -hmm. We have a counselor that um, they get counseling every two weeks. And so um, we've seen just some amazing transformations. Mm -hmm. And so... um, How many girls have gone through the program now? So right now we have seven. We have room for 12. Okay. Okay. So we have seven. All seven have delivered healthy babies. Oh, that's What was the last baby? The last baby... Okay, I was there in... August. August was I was going to say, every time I talk to you, I felt like there's another baby. There's another baby. baby. There's, there's another, another baby. So I know. Exciting. I know. So it's super yeah. exciting. It's fun watching. I remember um, after our first girl had her baby, we'd had two babies and I was there. And they don't, they don't like read to their children because they don't have books. Right. You know, they mm-hmm. just, a lot of things that we want to instill in that attachment and connection mm-hmm. with the mother And especially young mothers, they usually give their babies to their grandmothers or the aunties or someone to take care of. And so I was doing something in one of the rooms, and I could hear our little mama, Audrina, and she was in the playroom, and I could hear her reading a child's book. And so here's this little child with her baby in her lap, and she's reading a Bible story. And, and I can't remember exactly what it was, but she was like, and I peeked around the corner. I actually have a video of it. I peeked around the corner with my phone, and she was holding him, and she was like, and God loves you too, you know, oh. which she like, and I just, I, I was like, like bawling. okay, oh, I was. I was like, now I got to get out of here. About. Yeah, and so yeah. just to watch them learn their worth in Absolutely. Christ. yes. And that it doesn't matter what situation they came from, what happened to them, That's right. but that they're created in the image yes. of God, and he has a, a purpose mm-hmm. for their life. And so and I can't many, believe I get to be a part of it. And how many of them are receptive when you're teaching them about God and their education? Yeah. So yeah, is there – yeah, that's a great question. Is there a universal religion in the country? Yes, or? it is a Christian nation. Oh, okay. There's so much witchcraft mm-hmm. that it's kind of water, really watered down. Okay. Um, and then there's a lot of not – not truth mm-hmm. it is a christian nation okay. but it's mm-hmm. just um so there's not resistance though from the girls when you're no sharing not typically jesus yeah. um, so they know at least something about religion but they don't know everything that well, we know no and and uh, and it's very similar to here like someone might say yeah i believe in god but they don't really know jesus like christ a relationship. Yeah. Right. right and right. so um 
all of our girls have now been baptized except oh, for well, one. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then all of them have ha- – we did baby dedication at COF today. Oh, oh. Um, all seven have committed to – at the church we go to there, mm-hmm. have all, all seven of us said we want to have our babies dedicated. That's amazing. Right. So the one who hasn't been baptized – um, the house mentors have said they they watch her on the monitors praying mm-hmm. at night and stuff. So uh, we think she's there. She yeah. just hasn't made it official. But it's so. her personal decision. Yeah, yeah. and so and I, so you're doing it right. It's, it's really, really it's really yeah. amazing. Um, one night we were sitting at the table, and one of the young ladies I said, "So tell me your story," and you know, and I said, "So what about your faith? Tell me your faith story." And she was like, "Well, I grew up seventh. Uh, I grew up." Um, yeah, at seventh day or something like that, and and I said, well, tell me, do you, how do you like it or whatever? She goes, ah, I don't like it at all. I didn't like it, and I was like, why? She goes, because we don't get to celebrate birthdays, all oh, well. <laughs> you know, it's all those little things. Right. And I said, yeah. well, what about now? And she said, well, I'm a Christian now. And I was like, what? When? When did that happen? Right. And she goes, here at Kara's house. Aww. And I said, what do you mean here at Kara's house? Like hey, what? What? Yeah. And she said. Yes, I've done so many bad things in my life. I've made so many bad decisions. And you guys have shown me that Jesus loves me anyway, and he wants what's best for my life. It's amazing. And so, yeah, so little things like that 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 we don't even really know about are happening. And we don't know what we're doing. It's just God. We're trying to, you know, like... Right. It's nothing we've been able to like. If you ask me, you know, can you give us your business plan? I'd be like, no, I don't really. Want to. Right, right. Well, <laughs> if you ask God, He's the one who's really doing all this. But I always say the Lord only calls us to have an open hand and receive whatever He puts on us, and, yep. and be willing to walk through the door. And I think what a testament to your faith and carries that yeah. you guys were like, let's do this, and your husbands. We're like, let's right. go. Let's well, that's what like, Carrie how, says. I mean, like, that's crazy to me still. Carrie says it all the time. Carrie's like, isn't it amazing that our husbands just trust us yes. and let us be like, okay. I know. Okay. Well, yes. that's when you yes. know God is in like, it. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But that is incredible. So it's a blessing. Well, I want to know, how can we uh, support you? And I know the people who listen to our podcast and watch it, um, you know, my prayer and our our prayer as community of faith is that they are moved to action. And I don't know if that's them going to Zimbabwe and moving across the world. Maybe or they, they wouldn't find us. In, they wouldn't find you. Okay, Zimbabwe. good. But, oh We're my gosh, Zambia. I did it again. <laughs> Zambia. Zambia. It's okay. Like it's okay. But you know what? If they want to come with me. I can take them to Victoria Falls to okay. see one of God's seven natural wonders of the world. There you go. And it's on the border of <laughs> yeah, Zimbabwe and Zambia. Zambia. I don't know. I can show you both. I've I'm literally wondering. never talked come. about Zambia or Zimbabwe <laughs> ever in my entire life. So, you Well, know, then you're the first one that needs to come. I think I am just trying to make that person who's driving in their car right now feel like they get it because they were thinking Zimbabwe. No, but how can we support you um, as <clears throat> listeners? Like if, if God is impressing on us, hey, I want you to give, like financial support or is there anything else? I mean, is there a website? Like what is the yeah. best way for us to pray so for course, you? Anything? Yeah. yeah. Well, we love money. Um, okay. It's God has blessed us greatly um, that we're able to continue to do what we're doing and bring in more girls and think about growing is um, just a testimony to God sure. because it has nothing to do with us. Um, yeah, go to our website. It's Karis House, K-H-A-R-I-S, House, Z-A, for Zambia. Zambia. <laughs> Karis well, House, Z-A. Damn. I'm not going to mess it yeah, up again. Dot org. <laughs> um, you can follow us on social media. Mm-hmm. So when a team is going, we do lots of um, Amazon. Sure. Oh, wish list. Oh, wish list. Yes. Yeah, Amazon okay. wish lists. And we always need all kinds of things. Um, so that's one way you can support us. Um, you can come. You can uh, financially give. You can pray. Absolutely. I mean, I would say praying. Um, pray for our girls. Pray for our staff. I mean, think about a house with seven teenage girls, virtually all the same age. With all, hormones. All with hormones. <laughs> yeah. um, there's a lot of conflict and conflict resolution going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, just think about these little mamas mm-hmm who are trying to figure out school, trying to figure out when do I feed my baby, when do I do my homework, when do I study, all these things. Um, And our staff, who's amazing, they're doing an amazing job. But if you could pray for us. Absolutely. Sure. That is um, 
we have a prayer board, and I can't tell you, it's almost daily that we're texting them what yeah. to pray. So, yeah, so yeah prayer um, is great. Well, we will definitely be praying. And also yeah. Community of Faith, we are in the best gift season right now, and so you are also able to go to cof.church, and you can donate through the best gift link as well, and the church obviously supports yes. you guys yes. financially. Yeah. And we all we pray every day. If you haven't heard, we really do pray every day. Prayer we talk is the about work. it. We say prayer is the work. All we the talk time. about it every day because well, it's a real thing. A fun fact is COF was our very first church partner. Is that right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So right. super exciting. And so yeah. how many church partners do you have now? Um, one, two, four. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. In I know. One year. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So we're your favorite though, right? Yeah. Of course. You don't have to say that. <laughs> you don't have to say that. <laughs> now we... Carrie, don't show this. <laughs> Wait, well, Orlando. we just... We love the work that's happening in Carrie's house. Jessica, do you have any other questions about anything? I don't know. There's just so many things I think that we can help with that we don't think about. Right. And when we see the work in action and seeing what everything God's doing... I think that's one of the most amazing things. Yeah. Mm. And if y'all don't, if you're listening and not watching, <laughs> Jessica's crying. I'm an emotional um, person. When yes. I yeah. when I talk about things that God's doing, yeah. that's it gets me going. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And he's well, definitely working. Absolutely. And yeah. I'm, I think as as a person who works in women's ministry, um, our hearts break for women mm. and not mm. having an identity and not having a yes. voice. And I, I think that's the thing that I'm so drawn to about your ministry. It's mm. just that you're giving women a voice. You're giving them hope. And um, opportunities they uh, yes. never have, yeah. and opportunity to know Jesus. Yep. Oh, um, I know it, and it's it, to watch the transformation. And we have pictures of them when we're doing their assessments from mm-hmm. their homes with their mm-hmm. families. And uh, if I took a picture of each girl with the picture of her face now, it's oh. like a complete transformation. Oh. Oh. Well, and you have so much joy on your face when you <laughs> talk about it. You really oh. do. Well, I can't believe, like, literally, I have no qualifications. I'm mm-hmm. so unqualified. And that God lets me be a part of this. Yes. And every time I'm there, I end up back in our little apartment on the floor bawling because I'm like, why do it's, I get yes, to be a part of You're the one being right. blessed. Like, I can't right. believe I get to, yeah. to see this and watch this and do this. So it's it's so humbling. It's so hard. Um, but um, someone came and talked to me after the service today, and they're thinking about going on, like, changing their whole lives. And I said, you know, you just walk up to the edge of that pit mm-hmm. and you jump right in and God is there. He does the That's rest. Right. And right. it's so worth it. It is really yeah. worth it. That's amazing. Well, can we pray for you? Oh, yes. Um, Jessica, do you want to lead us in a prayer or are you going to cry? I'll probably cry. <laughs> okay. Well, that's okay. But thanks so <laughs> yeah. much for visiting uh, with us, Sandy. Thanks for talking and, to me. And we will make sure to include links to uh, Kara's House website um, and obviously Community of Face website if you want to get more information and your Facebook link if, if okay, that's where yeah. we can yeah. get updates. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time that we can come together and we can just talk about all of the wonderful things that you're doing in Kara's house. And I just thank you for the relationship that I have with Sandy mm. and just seeing her day after day, the love that she has for your children. Um, I just pray that you would bless them, that you would continue to provide, and that you would just work in an amazing way in the lives of the young ladies um, that are there and those that are there to come. And just be with the team that's over there that Um, the house moms, everybody that puts in every single day. I just pray that you would just bless them and bless um, your work that's going in. I pray that you would just be with us this year as we are uh, best gift. I pray that you would just um, instill upon us what you would have us to do and what you would have us to give because ultimately it's not ours, it's yours. Um, And I pray Mm -hmm. that we just give back uh, more and over and abundantly than you would have us to even ask or think or or give. Um, and we just thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Sandy. Thanks, you guys. We will see you guys next week for the next interview. Yes.